So we're going to have a basic lecture on a few things here because we're moving on to using real devices. Um, we would be able to actually test this on your real device, but I want to first do this on the one that we've got for the class, which is the same thing for everyone. And um, you want to plug it in. The cable's a little short, unfortunately, but you should be able to manage. You want to plug that in. Eventually, Windows will say it detected it. You also want to say yes on the device that it found it. So once you've confirmed that, then you can open up Adobe Animate, and then we'll proceed in just a moment. Of course, at any point, if you're having any trouble, let me know. Um, every step that we do is obviously very important. If you miss something, you'll fall behind, and when we get to this complex part, about devices, you definitely want it all to be set up. So, Action Script. Action Script is the programming language we will be using. It is an object oriented programming language. What does that mean? It doesn't matter just yet, but basically we will be able to write code to have interaction, to be able to do something. I'm going to have my sprites on the tablet and I want to be able to tap and something happens. Well, that all happens through action script. There are going to be events that happen. The event of tapping the button does a result. For example, it gives me 10 points or something. So we're going to... Um, First of all, work with, do you see the column here, create new, air for Android, that's what we're going to use. We're not going to use the other items over there. We're going to use air for Android. And these apps, these games that we can create will be compatible for Android or iPhone. The code of action script works on all devices. Um, we will start off with working with an Android project because we've got Android tablets. We can turn it on or off to convert it to the one that we need when we need it. But we will be working mostly with the Android one to start off with. So you want to click right there on Air for Android. And then you get this document, which is going to be a tall vertical document. And we will save this file, save as. Save this to your flash drive. I'm going to create a, a new folder with today's date. And see, let's see, today's 20, what's the first day of July? We'll just call this um, practice with today's date. So go ahead and save that. Actually, I just remembered something. If this doesn't work the right way on your device, you'll have to jump over to ours for a moment. I have to install the drivers. Oh, okay. 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 All right, so I'm saving this. It's still going to be an Adobe Animate file. I'm saving it to my flash drive. Uh, but the big idea is that when I created the project brand new, this is one of the first things you'll need to remember to do properly once you set up your real game. Remember, you want to, when you create the, the project, you've got to choose Air for Android. Um, at the moment, uh, this app will be vertical, right, 480 by 800. Eventually, we, we will make a game um, that will be landscape, so we'll have to switch the, the dimensions, but we'll, we'll do that later. And so we created this project file here, and uh, we don't have our Wacom tablets, but just go ahead and draw something. I'm going to draw a happy face. It doesn't quite look happy, actually, but okay. Just draw a face. Um, draw something on your project there, and we want to see, I want to get this project onto my tablet. So just draw something, save it.
closed for security. So we're going to draw something and then we'll talk about placing it onto our tablets. Okay, so this uh, right now is a project that uh, doesn't really do anything, but of course what, we, what our project will do is we'll be able to have like a countdown timer, a high score tracker, music, interactivity, all of the things of a real game, of course. And we're going to test this in two ways, either inside of Adobe Animate's debugger or, better yet, on a real device. Let's look at both ways first. So instead of doing control test, we're going to start to get used to debug up on this debug menu. Debug is to test your app to check for bugs, to check that your code works and so forth. And we have under debug movie a couple of ways here, but just look at it for the moment. Don't select anything just yet. In this debug menu, we'll have debug, which is similar to the control enter to test your project. We've got debug in a bunch of different ways, uh, air, air for desktop, air for mobile, or on device. Don't select device just yet, but notice here under debug, debug movie, we have it set to debug launcher. Just click that again. That's going to open up a sort of a simulator to pretend like it's on a real device, air for debug launcher. Click that. It's going to think about it for a moment. Oh, actually, we don't have any action script. Okay, uh, not a problem yet. Let's do one thing here then. Okay, um, let's. Okay, I guess we'll just add some quick action script. I forgot about that. Let's do this. Window menu actions. Window menu actions. Actions panel is the screen where we're going to write our code. Actions get attached to a, um, a layer. Actions are the language, is the action script code that we're going to write. So we may have stuff happening on the canvas, but then we're probably going to have dozens, or maybe like a hundred lines of code that does something. And what we'll do here is we'll write this command, trace open close parentheses semicolon so a lot of what we're gonna do in the second half of the class is writing code and if you've never written this any codes before it will be a culture shock you'll feel like wow this is so different I'm used to the artistic stuff and to be fully fleshed out in terms of being able to make your own game you often have to be a uh, somewhat uh, competent in both the graphics side of things as well as the programming side of things. And we're not going to become absolute experts in ActionScript at the end of this class. No one can do that in four weeks unless you don't sleep. And I do want you to sleep. I don't want you to become an insomniac. So trace command will put a message. We'll put some sort of message on screen. And I'm going to talk about what's a variable, what's a method, all that stuff, but it's a little too early for that. Inside the parentheses, put two quotes and then say, hello world. It's very common when people learn a programming language for the first thing that the language to say is the message, hello world. This has been a tradition since like decades that when someone learns a language, they program it to make it say, hello world, or any message, of course. But as you're writing your code, it might, you might get pop-ups, you might get hints that tell you this command works like this. Um, I wish it was a little bit more user-friendly for beginners because when it says trace parameters, well, what's a parameter? Anyone know what a parameter is? It's the thing that goes inside the parentheses. Basically. Uh, the variable or inputs, I guess. Yes. It's the thing that we put into a method, um, but we'll get into those details a little later. Um, right now, we're just having a command that will say hello world somehow, some way. So I'm going to save it. 
you want to write your code, save your code, and then test your code. And I was trying to show a little bit a moment ago, how do we test our code again? How do we run this so we can test it? Debug, debug movie, mobile launcher. So now that we have some action script, it shouldn't complain that we have no action script. You debug, a, you debug a project to check your code, but we had no code, so that's why we got that error. Okay, so what should happen is you get this simulator on the left side that would be like if I were actually holding a device. You can actually even tilt it around and kind of pretend you have a device. We don't have any sort of you know, gyro access features at the moment to detect the movement. Um, but we have that. And then we get a pop-up that's sort of simulating like the screen of your device. And then if you kind of move these windows around a little bit, you also then get out this output panel. And look, there's our message. Hello world. So if you got that, great. If you didn't, anyone having a little trouble? Okay. Make sure you get this message right here and then we'll go on. Thank you. 
Okay, so if it worked the first time, great. Uh, don't get used to that, unfortunately. When, it, when, it, uh, when you get more complex, you're often going to have a little bit more effort before it fully works. So here's something that we're going to need to get used to. Um, I've done the debugging. Okay, it seems to be fine. I'm going to close the simulator right here. Just close that little simulator, and then it goes back. Uh, you can close those. So close those windows to go back to, to your editor. Now here's something. Uh, don't do this, but I, I wrote my code wrong, and I didn't notice it. And when I try to debug it, you will get a pop-up that might be hidden behind your window. See, mine popped up right there, but for other people, it went behind. This is going to, part of the debugging is to help find your errors, right? I've got an error. My code looks exactly the same as before, but I put an error on purpose. And when you've got errors, this compiler error window will pop up. And in my case, it says on scene one, layer named whatever, frame one, line one, column seven, we get error number 1095, which is syntax error, string literal must be terminated. Well, that sounds like gibberish. And it is. When you're a programmer, you're going to see a lot of feedback like this that doesn't make sense in the beginning. But as you see the feedback more and more often, it'll make more sense. And what here it's saying, at the very least, even if I don't understand what this means, it's saying, go check on line one. I've only got one line at the moment, but when I've got 100, obviously that'll be useful. And when I've got lots of errors and I double click the error message, it'll jump me to the place that it's telling me. Go check out what's going on here. And right here, a string literal must be terminated before the line break. Well, that's technically saying you opened your double quote, but you never closed your double quote. So that is a string literal. Again, I'll get into all of the details of all of this complex stuff. As we go forward, I don't want to get too complex just yet. I want to show you the basic aspects of we're going to write some code, we're going to save the code, we're going to run the code, and we're going to be mindful for that pop-up that might happen that tells you there's an error and what line to go check out. So in that case, I fixed it and I can go back. Time saver. Once you've selected how you want to debug, you can just select the first debug. So once I've told it, just keep doing the simulator. You can just go to the first item right here or keyboard shortcut control shift enter to go back to your debugger. If you need to change, okay, now let me test it on my device, but not yet. Once you tell it, how am I going to test it? You can just go directly to the first debug. And then I've got a message down there, the hello. Okay, well, that looks nice. It, it appeared on screen in the simulator, but I now actually want to show it on a real device. This is a little bit more involved, but remember, everything that I'm doing, uh, this is being recorded. I do recommend you go back to the videos and rewatch them or help or get help during the lab time and such. But in order for us to put our, our project on our device, we need to do a few things. Step one. Let's go up to the File menu and go down here to Android Settings. If I was going to test this on an iPhone, you would have listed the item there, iPhone Settings, iOS Settings. Um, we're doing Android for the moment. So at the bottom there, select Android Settings. You get this pop-up with a bunch of things that we will go into detail in soon enough. But you get all of this stuff that needs to be filled in, but don't worry about it just yet. Jump over to Languages tab. And we need to set a language, set whichever one you want. Go with English. Then we'll go over to Permissions. Permissions are our app, what, what features do we want to give it? What will we allow it to do on a device? Will we allow it to access the camera? Will we allow it to access the internet and so forth? So right now there are no permissions. Your app can't do too much on the device. Let's just set the first one. Internet is fine. And we'll cover these in detail later, of course. Next tab up here, icons. We're not going to work on this just yet, but eventually we need to create some icons. Just like a real app 
has a little icon on the device, we need to create that. If we don't, it'll just do the generic icon. Later on, and part of the grade in a few weeks, will be that you make your own icon for your app. And we'll come back to this in detail, but notice we have to create six different sizes for the different sizes of devices. We'll come back to that later. Very important screen here, deployment. Deployment is just a fancy way of putting it on a device. So click on that, wait a moment. I might have to think for a moment. Here we go. There's a top part over here, certificate. Let me get back to this in a moment. Android deployment type. Are we, how are we making our app for debugging, for release? Just leave the default for release. How will it run with an embedded runtime? Just leave that by default. After publishing, hopefully it says, install my app on the connected device. And it's checked on also launch the app. And then also, well, which device? Because I might have more than one. So select the device. If you don't see this right away, you might have to turn on install it. So if you don't see a device plugged in here, turn on install on a device. You may get a pop-up on your tablet where you want to say, yes, I want to put my app onto it. And we'll cover these tabs several times so that you become very used to it, because there are several steps. And the last step over here, apps have a special certificate that says, I created this app. It is mine. It's legitimate. So we need to either load or create a certificate. We're going to create one right now because you don't have one yet. But once you go through the class and you've created one, you want to use the one you've created. The certificate is basically like your ID that is proving that this game is my game. I invented it. I'm going to upload it and so forth. But we need to first, the first time here, create a certificate. Click Create. All of this stuff, don't worry about what it is just yet. I'm going to put A, 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 just whatever. You don't have to put anything meaningful just yet. We'll do this more meaningful a little bit later. I'm going to save this file. I'm going to browse to save it on my flash drive. Or desktop, question? So this file that we're creating here doesn't matter for the moment, but eventually this will be a special file that proves that you created the app. So it doesn't matter what we're creating at the moment, but we need to save it. So click on Browse here. It wants to save it with some name. The name doesn't matter, but it's saving it as a .p12 file. It's a special kind of file. Just save it anywhere you want. I'm saving it in the same folder as my project. You can name it whatever you want, but I'll just leave the defaults and click Save. So I'm about to create a special certificate with my publisher name, etc., etc. Password, I just put A. You can put a real password if you want. doesn't matter at the moment. And click OK. It's going to think about it for a moment. It's going to process thing. It's going to say you've created a certificate. And I'll click OK. So up here now, we've got a certificate, this P12 file. You need to have a P12 file plus the password. Remember the password. You need to have a P12 file 
In order for us to be able to view your project on a real device, we can easily create one as we saw. We'll do it again later. You need to provide the password you just set to it. Hopefully you just put the password of A, like I did. If you put a different password, hopefully you remember your password from 10 seconds ago. Type it in there, and then click Remember Password for the session. If you don't remember your password, just create another one. It's OK. And then at the very bottom, it's going to cut off here, uh, but at the very bottom, click Publish. If you typed your password in properly, it'll start to process. If you typed your password wrong, it'll tell you you did something. It'll think about it for a moment. The first time you do this, it takes a little while, but then subsequent times take a little longer, and then eventually you will get your app uh, to appear on your device. So you will get that on happening in a moment, and you will then possibly see a pop-up that says successful warning. Just don't worry about that. But hopefully then you eventually see your project on your device. How many of you are seeing your project on your device? Raise your hand. Okay, great. Now take your hand and give yourself a pat on the back. You are an app programmer. Anyone having any trouble? Trouble? Did you get your project on the tablet?
All right, so if this worked, you've got something happening on your tablet. You've got uh, at least a little face happening and such. Uh, so other things that we can do is, well, it might be nice if we can have some interaction. I want to be able to click and drag and move this face. Well, that's, again, the purpose of action script and interactivity. Nothing happens right now. I want to do something, and I get a, re I get a result. So I'm going to click OK. If you get this message about this sort of like warning looking thing, just don't worry about it. Click OK. If, you're, if it's still showing these, these Android settings, just click OK again to go back to your, your main project. And um, remind me, in part one of the class, did you all ever look at something called code snippets? Yes. yes. OK, so we're going to look at code snippets again. Code snippets are a way for us to do something quickly. Instead of us manually typing this code, code snippets can give us a little bit of a head start. They're super useful because instead of having to retype the whole code perfectly, you use a pre-made little snippet, and then it'll do what you want. Then you can build on top of it. So. We're going to do this so that this is draggable, but first we need to convert it into a symbol. Anything that we're going to do game-wise basically needs to be some sort of symbol, usually a movie clip symbol, so that we can write action script so that when something happens, do something with that symbol. So that face that you drew, go ahead and select it. Let's turn it into a symbol, F8. And we will call this MC Face. So these symbol names here are meaningful because when you have a bunch of symbols in your library, you need to differentiate them, of course. But then we also need to add something known as an instance name because we can have, from the library, seven copies of that face on screen. Well, each one needs to be uniquely identified. Each one needs an instance name so that our action script knows that when you click the red one, you get one point. When you click the yellow one, you get 20 points. When you click the blue one, you get minus seven points. So you will have uh, this sprite, basically, this little graphic in your library, but we'll have different instances or copies of it on screen. We'll start with one instance first, so just click OK on that. And up on the properties, it says you don't have an instance. You don't have a unique name for this one copy of it on the screen. So we can write whatever we want as an instance name. But usually, we'll be writing things in the format kind of backwards, face underscore MC. Again, these names can be anything you want. But one reason to call it like this is because in the instance name, you also see what kind of instance it is, it's a, it's a movie clip. If I had made it as a graphic symbol or as a text symbol or an audio item, I can put something like background music underscore music. Press enter, and that happens to beginners a lot. Don't forget to press enter because nothing happens until you enter that instance name. So now this object is a, is a movie clip. It has an instance name. Confirm that it has an instance name. And I said earlier, ActionScript is object-oriented programming. 
It means it's a language that focuses on working with objects. And for us, at the moment, the only object we've got is a face. Later on, we'll have objects such as a high score, or 10 more sprites, or a sound. So ActionScript works with objects, things that it can understand what they are. It didn't know a moment ago what this was. I drew a face, but the ActionScript code didn't know. What is it? Once we turned it into a symbol and gave it a name, it knows, okay, it's an object. I can work with it. Well, we would then need to write some code in the ActionScript panel to, to listen for the moment that when we tap on it, we move it. But this is where the code snippet comes in. So in the Actions panel, you should have a bunch of icons up here. And you should remember that you've got your code snippets panel right there. This is a repository of a bunch of pre-made quick codes. Click one time on that, the uh, Actions the code snippets um, button. We have all we have all of these different um, types of codes. Let's open Action Script. And within these various sections, we have a way to deal with animating things, with moving from screen to screen, playing with audio, or touch events, touch and drag events. Notice when you hover your mouse over any of these, it gives you a little pop-up that tells you, allows the specified object to be moved by holding and dragging. So make sure you've got your face symbol selected so that it knows, let's apply this code onto this object, which is going to be the touch and drag. Double click it. It'll automatically create a layer for the action. It'll automatically write the code for you. Right there, it's how many lines? That's like 20 lines to do a simple movement. And this is the nature of programming, that simple things that we take for granted oftentimes have to be programmed in a pretty complex way. Again, you're not going to be a pro in ActionScript by the end of this course. You will get, however, a lot of experience in what are variables, what are functions, what are events, that sort of basic concept. You will be able to create two pretty fun, interesting games. You know, you're not going to create the next you know, Final Fantasy game or Diablo or whatever is hot. Insert hot game here, Crisis. Does anyone play Crisis anymore? Anyway, um, does, uh, that does, you're not going to get there to create like the, an amazing tier, you know, AAA tier one game. Um, but you will be able to create your own game with your own graphics, your own sound, with interactivity, real game that can go to the real app stores or new grounds or wherever you want to upload it. So within this four weeks that we have, we're going to work on two games based on your characters. Okay, I want to see this. File, save. File, Android settings, publish. There is a shortcut that I'll show you in a moment. We'll do it the long way first. Let's publish it. We don't have to type anything new again because it remembered from before, hopefully. Publish it. It'll think about it for a moment, and then it will load up your, your project, and hopefully you'll be able to drag it around. And we'll see if that works. If you get a pop-up error message, try to go to that line and see what it's telling you. All right, so eventually, hopefully, you get the message that it deployed, basically. 
And then now when I when I'm on my device, I should be able to drag it and move it around. There we go. So raise your hand if that worked. How many of you got your project moving and such on your on your screen? Good. Anyone need any help? So okay, great. I would love to be able to then get points or play music or do something. That's coming, of course. But taking a quick look, let's go back. Let's click OK on that and go back. OK. Going back to the code that it gave us, um, also kind of technically, if you note right here, now my screen's always going to get very cluttered. Mine's, my screen's a little smaller than yours. I'm going to be moving my windows around all the time. Um, it created for us a brand new layer called Actions, capital A. And it put there a little symbol that says you've got code there, Actions. And it wrote the code for us, 22 lines or so. And it also gave a little message at the top, touch and drag event, allows the object to be moved by holding and dragging. So notice this particular code here is gray. This is known as a comment. This is not real code that runs, it's a comment, it's a message. Other code that is like real code will either be blue or purple uh, or black. These are the various colors of your code. If you're looking at my code and your code is different colors, that's one indicator something's wrong. And we'll have to figure out what went wrong. But all of this other code is set up to simply drag it around. Let's back up to line one. And let's type slash asterisk. Asterisk is shift eight. Press enter a couple of <coughs> press enter a couple of times and then shift slash. This is a comment code. Basically anything that's between these two starting and ending points is a comment, is a message just like this. And so what you can do in between there is write my first action script. So anything that you write between those lines of code will not be processed as real code. And it's very useful to write comments because you're going to work on your code here. Maybe you work on it at home or at the library. You're going to forget what did it do. Giving yourself these notes, these messages to yourself helps you to say, don't forget to add the high score code here. Or if you're working with a team, oftentimes different people have to work on the same code. You give each other messages there. Uh, don't forget to add var greater than 7, blah, blah, blah. So these, these are just places for comments useful for adding notes to yourself ignored by the compiler which is just a fancy way of when it gets converted from code to an app the compiler is the software inside of Adobe Animate that takes this code and converts it to an actual website or animation or game so the compiler every time we debug or publish we are combi we are compiling our code All of this other code down here, uh, I won't get into it just in detail very, very much just yet, but we've got this code that says, you know, activate the ability to, to, to touch the screen, do some sort of event, and then do something again. We'll go into this in detail. But notice, we, we would have to write this and write it all perfectly if we wanted it to work. If one of these was misspelled, even misspelled with the wrong capitalization, that says event, but if I had typed it as capital event, that would have been an error. It would have popped up on my compiler messages saying you've got an error, go check line 19. So yes, unfortunately, doing programming can be pretty hard because you have to have an eye for detail. When we get more and more complex, there's a lot of detail to keep track of. And therefore, when we do our actual coding for our apps, you know, I'm gonna go slow through the lectures, make sure you are on track, 
Make sure you re-watch the lectures. If this is your first time ever programming, you want to re-watch the lectures. Don't, don't, don't be afraid to ask questions during the lecture and everything. Let's do one more thing here. Um, everything right now is happening on frame one, scene one. Well, sometimes I want something to happen on a certain scene and something else on another. I want to create a brand new scene with some other drawing and I want to use action script code to move from this scene to the next scene instead of scenes automatically moving from one to the next I want to control it I want to press a button or do a swipe to move to another scene we need to set up a few things we need to create a new scene so let's go over to our window menu scenes Let's create a brand new scene. I have scene one, let's create a new scene. And on this new scene, I'm going to draw something else. So on scene two, just put anything else. And what I want to do is to be able to move from one scene to the next scene. But we need different scenes, first of all. Okay, now, if, um, if I were to test this, um, I would get this result, which is that it would just over and over and over loop, because this reminds us that computers are dumb. They don't know what you want. I don't want my game, my project, to just loop over and over and over. That's what's happening here. It's showing frame one. Let me turn that off before we get seizures. Uh, frame one uh, has one thing, I mean scene one has one thing, and then scene two has another. But I didn't tell it, don't automatically play them over and over. Again, computers don't know what you want, that's why we have to program them. So we need to program back on scene one, either of these layers, but we're going to get used to using the actions layer a layer for actions, a layer for my trees, a layer for my sound, a layer for everything. We have a layer for actions. We need to go back to actions layer, frame one, and then in your actions panel, at the bottom right, the command stop. This is the, this is the command. We're telling it don't automatically play I want it to stop right here so that if I want to drag the little face around, I can do so. If I want to drag to the next screen, I can do so. But again, I, I know what I want. I want, to, I want it to show me this, and then I want to swipe to the next scene. But it didn't know that. And I have to tell it even this most basic thing. Don't play, you know, non-stop looping my project. Stop at this point. I want to do the same thing for the next scene because I may move to the next scene and then it'll want to play. And when it gets to the end of the next scene, it'll play back to the beginning. So again, it'll loop. I want to add a stop action to my scene two. 
Let's jump over to scene two. Let's make a new layer for our actions. We can call it actions. So right there, make a new layer, call it actions, press enter. And then select frame one of the actions layer. And in the actions panel, you write the stop command, the same as before. It's all lowercase. Capitalization and all of that stuff does matter. And I'll point it out when we capitalize this or that. But that's the basic stop command. I can write a comment right here. I can write basic command to stop the playhead here so that it doesn't loop around over and over. This again is the purpose of these comments to give yourself notes. You know perhaps now what stop does, but when we get to more complex commands, it's very useful to be able to write yourself some notes in your own words explaining what the code does. Now again, we're going to jump back and forth either testing on a device or testing on the simulator because sometimes it's faster to test on the simulator. So just to confirm this, if you do the debug, debug, it'll just bring up the simulator like this without having to take it to the real device just yet. And I just want to confirm that it's not looping over and over. If it still loops, let's fix that because we want to fix that before we can actually move from scene to scene. You can do the publish again if you want, but sometimes it'll be faster just to debug it. So all that we're just confirming is that uh, when I run it here, um, it doesn't automatically loop. That was the purpose of adding the stop on both of these scenes. Let's go back to scene one. In our code snippets, actions, We have a couple of ways to do this. The great thing about a programming language is there's a lot of ways to do something. The bad thing about a programming language is there's a lot of ways to do something. So one person's code may do something a certain way, and another person's does the same thing, but in another way. They're both right. Um, perhaps one is more elegant, one is more detailed, one is um, logically in a certain way. It's fine, as long as your code does what you need it to do. It does what you need it to do. If we look under mobile touch events, we have tap event, touch and drag, long press. OK, so none of these sound like what I wanted to do just yet, which is I want, my idea is I want to basically swipe and go to the next scene. I don't quite see that. Uh, drag event's a little different there. I have mobile gestures, OK? Two finger tap, pinch, pan, rotate, OK? Different things. That doesn't quite sound like what I'm looking for. That's fine. Mobile action. Swipe to go to the next or previous frame. Swipe to go to the next or previous scene and play. OK, there we go. That's what I'm looking for. I want to be able to swipe across the screen, and it goes to a new scene and play. Oh, since we added that stop, it won't automatically play. Um, but what I'm saying here is there's different ways to do the same thing. Over on the timeline navigation, we have something similar as well. Click and go to scene. That's another way to do something similar. I can click something instead, and it'll go to a scene. I want to do the swipe. So within the mobile actions, uh, let's double click the swipe. Well, actually, before that, let's read. Swiping the stage moves the playhead to the next or previous scene. 
and continuous playback. So it would automatically jump you to another scene and do the play. But since we've got the stop on the other screen, it should stop us. So let's double click, swipe, and go to previous or next scene. Double click that. It added more code after what are the code I've currently got. You've got the comment. Swipe to go to the next or previous scene and play. Swiping the stage moves the playhead to the next or scene. Whatever, great. So there's some code there, etc. Stuff I don't, I don't quite know what it fully means just yet. That's fine. I see something that says previous scene, pre next scene. Okay, that's fine. Now I'll go ahead and uh, run it on my real device. You can do a shortcut right here if you go to debug, debug movie, debug on device, or just go back to file publish. I'll do the same thing. Usually what I like to do is I like to press home on the device so that the app gets moved out of the way so that I know that it's loading up the latest version of it. So what's supposed to happen is your app loads up. It's supposed to then pause to show the first face. You should still be able to drag that face around. Then when you swipe on an empty part of the stage, it should then take you to the next scene. Where you drew the other thing. Question. Okay, I'll be with you one moment. Let me just check my code's working. Just one moment. Probably click OK on that. Okay, so the face is still there. I can swipe over, and then I'm there. So now we have this navigation of moving between scenes. So um, we've got that up there. If that worked, very good. If it didn't, let's see what's going on. Now we've added a new command.
Okay, okay. You, you will get two All right, so um, eventually then when you've got that result, yes, some of you might see that then when you try to move the face, it might not move, that's fine. Uh, and then when you swipe over, it swipes. So again, if, if every single detail is not just the same at the moment, that's okay. There's a lot of possibilities that are, that are a little different. We're just kind of getting acclimated too. We've got devices, we need to plug it in, we need to do a certificate, we need to do all of these details, which we will do again on Wednesday. Uh, this is all that I kind of wanted to do for the moment to introduce you to the device, to the various settings. Uh, we're going to close this in just a moment so you can have some lab time, final lab time for the movie. But if you got something somewhat like this, you're on a good track. The last thing that I want to do here is save. And then up on debug, you should have end debug session if you went through the debug screen so that it goes back to the normal editor. So if it went back here and you got some fun result with that, okay, good. You started to get your first intro to what, uh, what ActionScript is and such. If you notice on Canvas, you're going to have a link there that I recommend that you start reading. This is the ActionScript introduction straight from the official Adobe website. And I would start over here on the right side. Uh, I would read whichever ones you want, starting from syntax. I would read uh, the first two, at least. If you want to read any more, that'd be great. It's a little bit more complex. This is optional. It's not homework or anything, but I would really recommend to read these first two if you've never done any programming. That link is on Canvas. And for the moment, if you've got something to work on your device, you're good. If you see it also, if you see on your device, you go to View All Apps, you should see your app there. It's a real app that got installed, and it'll be listed right there. It'll just say practice or whatever. But later on, we're going to put a real name, a real icon, and everything. It'll be a real app, Android or iPhone. And of course, eventually, we're going to have this working properly and doing a real game and so forth. 